Welcome everyone to our session today. On behalf of Finexio and Open Envoy, we're excited to have you all with us. So before we get, before we start, there's a few housekeeping items we wanna go over. Today's session will be recorded and the video link will be sent after the session with some additional materials for your reference. During the presentation, Please submit questions through the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We'll have a few minutes after the presentation to take your questions. And the subject of today's webinar is freeing your AP teams. So we'll be discussing the state of AP today, the typical challenges that are encountered, and the technology that is available to overcome these challenges. We'll also discuss the benefits and outcomes of AP automation, and why winning finance leaders are choosing automation to achieve growth. So now I'd like to introduce today's speakers, Bill Fox and Matthew Tillman. Bill Fox is an internationally known speaker on digital transformation and a former economic crimes prosecutor. As the chief commercial officer at Finexio, he brings extensive payments, cybercrime, AI technology, and consulting experience to leading Finexio's business development and partnership teams. Matthew Tillman is the co-founder and CEO of Open Envoy and an investor in early stage companies. He spent the last two decades applying machine learning to finance, advertising, and logistics for some of the world's largest brands. Gentlemen, take it away. It's good to be here. Thank you, Megan. Uh, Matt, really looking forward to this discussion, and I want to thank everybody who has tuned in today. And we kind of want to set the stage here around, you know, what we're going to be talking about today and where we've been in payments and, and where we're going in payments and where Finexio and Open Envoy are leading the way. Um, Open Envoy, and Matt will go into this uh, in more detail as we go through this uh, webinar but really deals with everything up to the okay to pay. So that whole first function where you're getting to where now you know who you wanna pay, when, how. Finexio deals with from that okay to pay, we're gonna handle all those payments and everything that has to do with actually the payments and the enablement on the other end. And what's happening in this space is that we're moving from a current state or a then state where we still find in talking to many customers, the current state of payments being made manually through banks and these sort of time consuming antiquated ways. And, and COVID really kind of framed this out and shined a light on this. These manual paper-based processes where you had, I'm gonna send somebody into the office once a week and they're gonna get all the, try to get all the invoices and then they're gonna, send checks over to the CFO and he's gonna sign them and FedEx them back and then I'm gonna take them to the post office. And people were sort of understood how antiquated this process is. And where we wanna to get to is the automation and digitization of, of most of these processes. And it's not simply a matter of taking manual processes and digitizing them. It also has a number of other benefits around fraud and compliance and reduction of people doing different kinds of tasks. And we'll talk a lot about this. So Matt, you wanna talk a little bit about this kind of frame out of what we're gonna be going into deeper today? Yeah, I think, the, thank you, Paul. I think the, the, the funny thing about this space is that, that it's been around for a while. AP automation has been a concept for a while. Payments have been a concept for a while and remittance. Um, and the challenges that customers are facing are still sort of the same old challenges, same old pain points. And I think we're going to go into that today, kind of why that is. Um, but what you notice and the reason companies like ours exist is because we see an opportunity where the bar has been set so low in this space by, by vendors. And the customers really feel that as a pain point. They're still processing uh, in the same way they always have. And so, you know, manual paper-based payments, uh, re-keying, um, manually coding information into an ERP, you know, classifying uh, expenses, et cetera. And um, it is really amazing how this has still sort of been a problem. And finally, new technology like ours, like yours, 
has started to take that and say, okay, well, there's a very different way of processing these payments. There's a very different way of automating these systems going forward with modern technology. And so, uh, yeah, just really excited to see that there's, there's such an adoption in the industry, um, obviously across our customers for this, this automation. All right, and we've got a polling question right off the bat. I'm going to launch the poll here. You guys should see it um, shortly on your screen. What is the biggest challenge for your AP team? Is it working with Spirit Systems, managing disputes and supplier communications, manual paper-based processes, increasing and managing cash flow, or a limited ability to identify invoice errors and duplication? So please um, participate. We'd love to hear your answers. Um, we'll share them in a moment. In the meantime, do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah, Bill, I'd love to hear, Bill, your, your customers' take on this. Like, what are, what are the key things that your customers are looking for in terms of their, their pain points? I think for us, it's a lot around efficiency, time-saving, um, and these manual methods, uh, especially, you know, we mentioned COVID briefly, but it's very hard to hire new people now and you can't scale by just hiring more people. And also hiring more people doesn't fix any of the problems around these error prone manual functions. So yes, there's rev share and we optimize and they can actually start making money from this, but really what they're concerned about is, is they realize that throughout their own lives as consumers, you know, with Amazon and Uber and, and those kind of functions. And what they're seeing across business is if I don't get out of this sort of ancient way that I've been doing this quickly, I'm not gonna be able to compete with the other businesses in my space. And if I can get out of this, then I can deploy those people that are doing these sort of mundane repetitive tasks to doing something actually strategic for my company and think about other strategic initiatives within my company. So for, for us, I think we see uh, all of these things, but a lot around an understanding that it's time for me to bring this aspect of my business into the modern era. Yeah, 100%, 100%. We see customers all the time. In fact, the reason we started is because kind of customers of ours only had a couple of other options, one of which was um, outside of relying on default sort of ERP implementation uh, functionality, they usually worked with a BPO. So instead of having, you know, you know, expensive onshore labor, they offshored that. They received the exact same problems, the exact same errors occur because it's still just humans. But now they're using 800 humans instead of eight humans. And so uh, because otherwise... Uh, you know, if you try to grow your AP team linearly with the growth of your business, obviously it's going to destroy, going to destroy margins and, and ultimately cash flow. So, and I think that's, uh, that's something we're seeing here. The other thing that we're seeing in the poll, which I think is really interesting is working with disparate systems. Uh, this is something we definitely have to solve because we kind of, we have a specialty on what are called variable cost invoices. Um, and that means integrating with ERPs and uh, handling a lot of different types of documents um, our average customer has like three ERPs as an example. Um, so is that, is that similar for you guys as well? Yeah, very much so. You know, we're ERP agnostic. Uh, you know, we want to be able to work with, with whatever ERP systems. And one of the reasons that we chose to really focus on having the most available payment options, we have 10 different ways that we can pay is so that we could be delivered that one okay to pay file and you didn't have one outsourced organization doing your checks and another one doing the B card and you have to then deal with all these different systems. It's you're sending us that one file and, and that entire process is taken care of. So we eliminate the need to deal with those kinds of desperate systems. Yeah, that's a great point you're making. We had one customer where it took something like six months to do an integration because their sort of okay, pay, okay to pay file network was actually just a check writing service on a, on a legacy green screen platform that we had to code to. And it would have been much, uh, much better to have you guys in there. This is before, before we've met, obviously. But uh, yeah. those types of things are just going to be so much more straightforward in the future. We won't have to think about, you know, legacy file types from late 80s operating systems.
All right, so, moving on. Oh, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Megan. Nope, Bill, the floor is yours. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, you know, it just uh, jumped out at me that we were just kind of talking about this around the, um, the great resignation and the difficulty in hiring people these days. Um, and this sort of mandate across the board in business to do to do more with less. Uh, you know, the competitive landscape is so rough now that organizations are trying to find ways to focus more on strategic initiatives, customer facing initiatives, you know, delighting customers, things like that. And the more that you can eliminate some of these backroom manual error prone processes, then you can really focus on those digital transformation initiatives. And one of the things I really like about being at Finexio, and I'm sure the same is true for Open Envoy, I've been working in digital transformation quite extensively the last 15 years, a lot around AI and database and data integration and things. And this kind of digital transformation can have an effect in weeks. And you can really literally change this function in a business in weeks. And I was just talking to a friend of mine, and when I was telling him this first statistic about that 80% of payments are still made by check or about $12 trillion worth in the United States, he just was like, well, I thought nobody did that anymore. But actually, almost everybody still does that. Yeah. So there's just a tremendous opportunity. You said that the bar is so low that um, you can really transform this function of business in, in a matter of a month. Our first customer sent us a check for the AP automation solution that they purchased. <laughs> um, and it was that moment that I said, you know, guys, it, it could be even better than, than this. And I think they didn't realize how fast, to, to your point, that transition can actually occur. Because I think people are used to buying, you know, enterprise software, a couple million bucks from, you know, every the big brands that we all know, and waiting 18 months to deploy software they know they're never going to love. Right. I mean, that's right. that's the real challenge with this particular space. We had a customer, had two customer examples. One's great. On another, on another call, one of our customers said, I said, Well, like, what's the outcome for you? Like the cape, the ROI was great, calculated really nicely, et cetera. But she said, honestly, I just um, enjoy my job now. And that was like the best sort of response you can have as a as certainly as a founder of a company to hear that. But but that's really what we're talking about here. We're talking about people are resigning because they don't want to copy and paste data from spreadsheets to spreadsheets anymore or rekey data. It's not necessary. They know that it's not value add and they don't wanna do it any longer. And so I think we're starting to see a lot of that. Another uh, customer opportunity called uh, last week and he just said, he started off the call with, we just lost our controller and we just lost our head of AP. They just don't wanna do this work anymore. And I think that's yeah, and then in the scaling, you know, we had, a, we had a customer conversation, a construction company, and they build these stores and the, the stores that they build told them, well, we're going to build 500 locations over the next five years. And there's four people in the AP department. And her thing was, wow, so I could do that without hiring any more people. This is going to save me enough time and manual effort when I get out of this whole check writing business and this manual processes business with these same four people that know the business really well, know what we want to do, know what our strategic initiatives are. They're going to be able to scale this business with me. Yeah. Without working 90 hours a week, which is what, yeah. what actually happens right now, right? They just have to work more hours. Yeah, so, so what is this? We're, we're kind of alluded to this future of work for finance, and we've talked a little about, you know, what it looks like now and this transition we're going through. So one is, is this remote-enabled piece, uh, and we've talked about how COVID accelerated this, but I think also on the business side, a lot of businesses realized that, oh, we had 100 offices across the United States. We worked remotely really successfully last year with them all being closed. So yeah, we want to get people together and that's important, but maybe we only need 10. Um, so to be able to enable that remote business model that now is never going to completely go away is something you can do with automation. It's highly scalable. Obviously, it's not a formula where you're like, well, if we want to grow 100%, I have to hire X many people. It's what can I automate? What systems can I bring in to help me do this without having to 
train and hire all these people and do all that. And then obviously I talked a little bit about the competitive landscape and strategic initiatives and to be able to think about your business, your finances, your supply chain in a strategic way and get the analytics and the insight and the transparency into that whole ecosystem of your company to make strategic decisions. And then to know that those suppliers out there are being supported they're being enabled, they can go into the portal instead of having to call you and somehow wait for somebody to answer and look up your stuff. They can just go right in the portal and see where my payment is and when it's coming and what form it's in. So this really, you know, this, this statement at the bottom, just can't do this with people. It has to be done with automation. Yeah, hundred percent. And a lot of customers that we talked to initially they're concerned about the fact that they are remote teams now and onboarding historically has been large project management teams from a systems integrator coming in and spending, you know, 150, 200 grand a month to actually implement these sorts of tools that we're talking about now. And that's just not the way technology, this type of technology works any longer. Um, our customers were remote the minute we met them because we started in the middle of COVID in 2020. And so we went from zero to 15 billion in spend under management in 18 months because these teams were remote, because these teams needed to learn how to rely on standardized, consistent communication mechanisms. And uh, and it actually worked smashingly well for us and for our customers. In fact, our one of our customers, their CFO said, I don't think we could have done this in the way that we used to do things. We couldn't have deployed it this quickly because we were so conditioned to that six, nine, 12 month deployment cycle that you get with large ERP packages. So the technology has completely changed our ability to adapt to this, to this new reality. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, we've kind of alluded to some of this stuff but we'll go into it in a little more detail. So, you know, the a, your AP team without what we're talking about here, sort of the status quo now, you're, you're printing and signing these checks, you're doing all this stuff manually. You have generally low quality data. And this is something that we see, we get spent, we get sent these pay files and, and a lot of work sometimes needs to be done on them so that they can be digitized and suppliers are calling all the time. There's errors and duplicate invoices and Matt, you can talk more about that and, and managing those disputes managing refunds and resends. And then this just, you know, the invoice auditing stage and, and Matt, you can talk about that. And when you can get out of that, especially, and you know, I had a meeting yesterday with the CFO of a fairly large company, and she was very interested in, you know, what we're talking about today, this sort of open envoy for next year combination. She wanted the whole thing automated at once. <laughs> you know, she was like, I get what you guys are doing. That's amazing. But I also want the invoice side. I want the part up to the okay to pay. And when you can offer that in a really nice package, and it's not as you talked about, and you just go to this fully automated as a service AP function, um, you know, that's a tremendous boon. And that's, you know, I like to call that practical digital transformation. Um, as opposed to talking about, you know, oh, you know, processing 100 billion parameter AI models. You know, this is like, you've got four miserable people right now doing this and you're constantly getting calls and you're making errors and that's what your staff does to, then you're out of that business a month later. Yeah, well, it used to be the case that you couldn't pick best of breed solutions because one, they didn't work together properly. Two, um, the large vendors were just, you know, sort of that classic one throat to choke mentality. And the reality is um, you don't have to do digital transformation like that at all any longer. I mean, we named our company Open Envoy specifically because we wanted to work with payment networks. We're not payment network specialists. We're not payment specialists. Um, we wanted to nail the digitization problem, clear through the audit problem, the audit functionality, and that's classically called combination of matching and audit. 
And now you can afford to, as a CFO, be nimble with your vendor selection. Whereas in the past, you really were penalized for being nimble with your vendor selection because that, that usually meant a lot of professional services fees were going to come down the, the pipe if you, if you were trying to be too nimble. And now you, you simply don't have those same conditions. So that market doesn't exist in the same way anymore. So companies like ours can very easily tie into a Finexio. And, and that partnership means that you get everything is now digitized. So your vendor data is correct, right? Your VMF is correct, which means payments are more streamlined. There's less payment risk. So it actually affects the, the entire process is one, incredibly easy to implement and produces that, that work efficiency that you're looking for, which is, you know, 84% of your staff's time is a, that's a big number. And we're going to talk a little bit about more ROI a little bit later, but I think people don't realize just how fast these things are to implement. Um, and when you mentioned duplicate, you know, invoices and things like that, I can't tell you how many times we have a conversation with a customer that, where they say, can you process more than one invoice if there's more than one invoice attached to the email? Now, the fact that they're asking that does not mean they, they're unintelligent. It means they've been conditioned by this industry that, I'm sorry, the best we can do is one invoice per email, which is the most ridiculous concept as a technologist. We're just like, no, I can intelligently process invoices of multiple types within the same document. I can search against a databases database of previous invoices that were submitted to prevent duplicate payments from ever being submitted to, you know, a payment network like Finexio. And so it's just one of those things that you almost have to unwind the history of poor implementations, which last 18 months, right? And now we're talking to customers and they realize they can be onboarded within a week, you know, within an exceptionally fast period of time and start to generate that ROI. So um, yeah, this this is a complete game changer. The way that we're uh, we're connecting with yeah, that that really resonates. With the, this sort of unwinding of expectations have, that have been built in by the big traditional vendors. One of our customers a couple months ago asked, "Well, do you work well with this ERP system?" And we were like, "Well, we're ERP agnostic. It's much simpler than that. You just send us this file." And they said, "Well, we have this ERP system." And we want you to get us a reference from another customer that you work with that has that ERP system that they're happy. And so they were not taking the answer that we're ERP agnostic and we can work with any ERP. They were so ingrained in this, well, we have this ERP and everything has to be integrated into it or it's not gonna work. And of course we got them the reference and now they're a customer and everything's fine. But it was a really interesting conversation because they were not going for the answer. We're out of that era where yeah. everything has to be tied into that, they, they still wanted that. We have one customer of ours owns an ERP, a very famous top, let's say top eight ERP. And uh, they, they um, were looking at us and they, have, they actually have three ERP solutions that they use in house, but they actually own, own one as a company. And uh, they were looking at our solution and said, oh, you're, you're actually just, you're gonna make our ERP pleasant to work with. And that's the that's sort of that moment where customers look at it and say, oh, I just don't need to use this sort of kludgy workflow that's been around since the mid 90s. Right. And to your point, your, your point is don't use it at all. Just export the entire file. We'll take the OK to pay file and we will execute against it. You don't need to worry about, you know, format or anything else like that, which I think is a really powerful story from a payments perspective. Yeah. So. Well, now like sort of go a, a little bit deeper into a few of these, to, into a few of these sort of specific ROIs around time and cost savings, around, you know, kind of delighting the vendors and having that fully managed, uh, outsource managed, and then stronger protection from fraud as well. Yeah, well, I'm so gonna, we, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna take this one just because um, this is almost 100% of our focus as, as a company. Right. It's uh, the traditional standard operating procedure today is get invoices. If they check within a tolerance, spot check as many of them as you possibly can. Not going to be anywhere near 100 percent, no matter how many times people say that and just get them out the door and get them paid. And then if we notice that there was a discrepancy that should have been captured on a larger invoice, variable cost invoices usually is where that happens. So things like media freight, things like that. There's a clawback period and the clawback period 
six to nine months, forget about the just the operational efficiency on that, which is a nightmare for both parties. You guys can speak to improving vendor relationships, obviously, because of that. But if you prevented it in the first place, immediate cash flow benefit reduces your cost of capital, increases your cash flow, no dispute processes, your payment network's happy, they've taken on less risk, obviously, et cetera. But I think these are the types of things that we're looking at is how many hours can we remove from the process within an, within an APT? Yeah, and then you know, from, from our side, what we see is we're getting this payment file that's clearly not optimized. So there hasn't been a whole lot of thought into what's the best way to pay these folks and what way would they be the happiest with in yeah. terms of their own cash flow um, and how can we optimize that? So, you know, we have a team, supplier enablement, that is solely tasked with, you know, reaching out to those vendors and understanding, getting them to understand how they can switch over to an electronic payment, the benefits of that, and then on the customer side, for our customers, they can immensely decrease the time and the cost of doing the payment side of the business. And in fact, when you switch a check customer over to a V card, for instance, you know, we revenue share that back. So we can actually be going from cost savings to your AP department becomes a revenue generating part of the company. So, uh, you know, and, and, and by doing what you're talking about, this very specific vendor and supplier enablement, not only are they all happier, but you start to actually um, see revenue from that part of the company and be able to get a much easier view into your supply chain finance and your cash flow and be able to control that and use that strategically. So, so all these uh, benefits and you know, some of them are listed out there like extending BPO by 30 days and catching the invoice errors that you talked about. But all this together is a real, is just a huge transformation. And, and you know, some of why Finexio came into being and why Ernest founded the company, we worked together at a big healthcare payer and we just found how janky the process was and how incredibly uh, ripe it was for disruption. So the time and cost savings are, are kind of where, what we lead with um, and, and they're just tremendous. So vendor relationship management, I, I alluded to this and this is a big part of what we do. So what we'll do is when we get a large pay file, say you're paying, a thousand or two thousand or three thousand or in some cases twenty thousand vendors. We're going to kind of segment that and understand who are getting really large payments, who are you paying really often, um, who are getting very small payments or are coming in and out and getting paid every few months, and then we can show that on a you know kind of a holistic dashboard, give you visibility into that, and say hey these vendors we think should be getting a very white glove touch from you and us saying, hey, we have this tremendous opportunity to offer you this digital payment, and this is the advantages to you, and let's set up a call and have a conversation about that. Maybe there's a mid-tier where they're getting a check, and we can digitally attach a mailer to that check saying, hey, you can go on this portal, and one, two, three, sign up for an electronic payment, whether that's a V card or an ACH or whatever it is. And then there's probably a level of vendor that you don't really have much of a strategic relationship with, they can just get an email saying your next payment will be electronic. And, and the uptake on that is very high. So this way they're participating in this decision around how to get paid and what's to their advantage. And they have much more access to this detailed electronic portal where they're not at sort of the, the whim of the customer, you know, I'm gonna call, it's outside of hours, whatever. I can just go on the portal. I don't have to bother. It takes me a tenth of the time. I don't have to sit on hold. I'm just going to check where it is. Great. Now I know. You know, it's funny that you, you mentioned that. And it, and it occurred to me that the standard operating procedure today in companies is I beg my vendor to, to send me an invoice in the format and shape that's easiest for me to process. That's step number one. I beg my vendors and they're always unhappy about it. 
right? Because I don't have always the leverage over every vendor that I would like, right, et cetera. In fact, one of our customers has a 2% uptake on their previous invoicing solution because 98% of their vendors just said no. So that's like step number one today is beg your vendor. Step number two is beg your vendor to give you payment information. And so what we've done with the combination of the two of our companies is we've removed the need for any vendor, vendor setup with regards to invoices, any sort of collaboration function on submitting invoice, et cetera. There's absolutely no supplier portal requirement ever at all for your vendors to sign up for Open Envoy as an example. And then the second component is Finexio, where you guys don't require your customers to go out and beg their vendors to select their payment method, et cetera. You handle that for them and give them access to completely accurate, fast to cash uh, business. And just that concept right there is sort of mind blowing, I think, for a lot of CFOs and, and AP departments in that they've never had an opportunity to work with partners where they didn't have to beg on both sides for the vendor to change their behavior. Yeah, and, and the vendor behavior is very predictable based on what you said. So normally, if you were to go to your bank and say, okay, we want to offer a V card, and then you just send out this thing saying, you can get paid by V card now. You might expect a five or six percent uptake of that. We're running closer to twenty percent conversion, so that four x times in conversion is because of the way we're doing it in a thoughtful way, and those vendors are being now included in this decision process, and they're like, "Yeah, this is what I want." So you know, we're able to go at two, three times, four times the rate of conversion because now these vendors are actually feeling that they have a say in this process and are it's a strategic decision for them to come on board. So this one's near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm the former deputy chief of economic and cybercrime at the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office and a special US assistant. Uh, and this is what I did was cyber and economic crime. Um, and it's, it almost goes without saying that as you digitize, there are still threats online and we don't want to downplay those, but, um, this is where hackers want to concentrate is on the money. You know, even when they do ransomware, when they, they're always after money. So the question is, if I'm a small, medium-sized, even, you know, getting into being a large business, you know, do I want to be in the business of cybersecurity around the bank account information that I, oh, that I, that I have? Um, do I want to be sending physical checks through the U.S. mail, which has never been slower or jankier than it is now? Um, do I want to expose all that information? You know, hopefully this will never happen. But what if there's another lockdown? Do I want to be FedExing physical checks back and forth between my AP people uh, and my CFO so he can sign them and then I can put them in the mail? So the ability to uh, do this, and we take this obviously very seriously, to have this go, you know, we use AWS, so we have all the security that they offer, and then we use even a more secure vault within that. We're doing all the KYC, know your customer, OFAC checks. So understand that you're not paying anybody that you're not supposed to be sending money to. The cybersecurity wrapped around this, the storing of the bank, the, the bank account. So when a vendor calls to change their bank account number, we're doing everything necessary to make sure that's a legitimate request from a designated person to do that. So, you know, that's something that with, you know, our very narrow focus on payment execution and support, uh, we can do and continually do at the state of the art. So at, you're getting this great service, you know, you're no longer having all these problems with your invoices and you're gonna comment on that. You're not having all this jankiness on the back end of the system, but this all just comes with it because now you're getting a best in breed solution that's 100% focused on digitizing as part of the business. There is a lot of advantage to working with vendors who are specialized and focused 
versus the, oh, I guess we need to be in the payment space too, which is what most large vendors do. They kind of tack on something that's that's not necessarily even close to best of read or even trying, and that really affects them in the fraud area. So I'm glad you commented on that. The big thing for us is <clears throat> the standard operating procedure for AP finance teams today is reactive. It's reactive with disputes. It's reactive with fraud. It's reactive with vendor ma management. And so these so our solutions combine specifically to make it preventative in nature. So you prevent fraud at the invoice coming in, you prevent payment fraud at the bank wire details and the ACH style, uh, ACH uh, uh, information and the wire information on the back end with Finexio, et cetera. You give customers the opportunity to, to pay with vCard, which is phenomenal in terms of security uh, uptick. And so we were, Open Envoy was actually named a Gartner reference vendor for invoice automation. And that's because we protect against fraud in the in the beginning it's not just intentional fraud such as you know like hackers want to submit fake invoices and things like that we see a lot of unintentional fraud which comes from the fact that when you're a large enterprise and you buy from a vendor that vendor has many subcontractors and those subcontractors build that vendor in aggregate and it's very difficult for your your vendor to decipher which needs to come to you and so a lot of times you see a lot of assets, royal charges, surcharges, what some call them, that come through on an invoice. And if you looked at every invoice, you're going to find 36% of those invoices have errors. One of our customers is an example. They had an error of $518,000 that they would not have found. And they've said this publicly, they would not have found without Open Envoy. And it's because we do things that are only really possible programmatically. Like a human, it's not really... Uh, possible for humans at scale to automate the process of fraud detection. So you have to have a lot of technology around that uh, shape of the invoice, line item level detail, SKU information, uh, currency fluctuations, all of those variable aspects really need to be understood really well in order to um, prevent against fraud in the uh, of the unintentional and intentional variety um, before it ever gets to okay to pay. And then at the okay to pay side, you have all sorts of other areas for fraud, um, uh, like like Bill mentioned. So um, all that's really, really, really critical. Yeah, and, and I think that to your point, uh, it's interesting. I just was thinking about this. I think those large vendors that kind of tack on payments, they, they were aware of this vulnerability, which yeah. is why they're kind of running to us. <laughs> Right. now to become the payment engine. So large procurement companies, even banks are, are coming to us and saying, wow, we heard about this. You know, we do payments, but not the way that you're doing them. So let's just make what you're doing our payment, uh, you know, our payment piece. And that gives them that whole sort of wrapped around as a service, including the cost savings and the fraud protections and all that, that, that since it's not their only business, they can't focus on in that way. That's right. All right, so we've got another polling question coming up. You're gonna see it on your screens in just a moment. Um, so please give us your answers. What is your top automation objective? Is it streamlining workflows, growth and scalability, managing cash flow or access to working capital, freeing up staff time or enhancing spend visibility? So we'll leave this open for a couple minutes. In the meantime, gentlemen, do you wanna give us your thoughts on, on on these top automation objectives? What's your prediction, Bill? <sighs> it's so hard to predict because generally in every conversation that I have with a potential customer, these all come up. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think that uh, I'm gonna, if I can pick two, I'm gonna do freeing up staff time and managing cash flow. Yeah, I think for us, we tend to see more free up staff time and streamline workflows as kind of something similar. Um, our customers are usually, you know, one of our customers is 135 years old, uh, as an example. Um, and so, you know, just streamlining any sort of workflow that's been around for the last probably 40 years is my, exam my, my take uh, is, is really valuable. Cash flow is the thing that people should get out of automation. In reality, you should get free cash flow. It should just make you money. 
Um, a lot of vendors don't really, they haven't sold in that way because they, they were never sure. They, they had to sell database tables, right, for the most part in the industry. And so we've come along and we're very ROI driven as, as you guys are as well. And I think um, that's kind of a new thing for people to think about first versus, versus the other way around. But I love how you guys do rev share on cards. That makes a ton of sense as well. Yeah. Okay, streamlining workflow was number one. So, so you got that one. But obviously, the the cash flow and freeing up the staff time were uh, a tied for second and third. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it that's the beautiful thing about um, going into automation, especially with an end to end solution. Uh, to your point, like the cash flow should just come. You know, all this comes as a result of just turning on its head this old manual broken process into a modern digitized process that can actually delight a customer on the other end and you know eliminate a $500,000 inadvertent error that you wouldn't have caught so so you know really when customers are talking to vendors they should be understanding you know this whole sort of range of benefits that come if you're too focused on like, well, just what's my revenue share going to be? Or can I get rid of two FTEs in this department or what it is? You should be thinking about it as this is a crucial part of my business and I'm really going to be able to transform it in a fairly straightforward, really quick way. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll start out here. You know, um, most of the conversations that I have are with CFOs. Um, you know, the CFO is banging on their door, telling them to fix these problems and is wants to grow their businesses, scale their businesses, compete more effectively. And uh, they know that this can happen and they're, they're under pressure to do this. And, you know, the reason why they're working with us, and I think this statistic is very uh, consistent with the poll result. I mean, time savings, efficiency and task reprioritization is getting rid of an old workflow that's time inefficient, uh, very janky, and all the tasks that your staff are doing are ones that they shouldn't have to do anymore. So, so that's really the bulk of it, is to be able to bring your AP team into the modern world, take away these repetitive, error-prone, fraud-prone tasks, and then you know move into starting to think about strategic initiatives um, and how you can compete and grow your business. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, just to hundred percent in alignment with this. Um, it's, it's one of those things where we end up talking a lot to somebody on the AP department who's just absolutely worked and just done with it, quite honestly. And usually they're the person that the CFO has relied upon for a good long while. And so by the time they give us a call, they're hands in the air, like, I, I give. I, this is just too much. We can't grow. We can't scale. And the CFO, to your point, is really concerned about turnover, uh, especially with the past couple of years. And so, uh, so the conversations are, are usually, I mean, we, we don't have combative conversations. We have, here's how much we spend. How much do you think we can save? How much can you help? And it's just like, tell us, guide us, like, how can we, how can we work in this new world? Because the big vendors, they're not helping. The big vendors are giving us big professional services contracts and tying us to monthly retention plans. And we don't have time for that, right? We need to save money and we need to make sure people don't quit, right? So, uh, so yeah, complete agreement here. Yeah, a lot of the companies that we talk to, you know, they're, they're large enough that the, the savings and the, the time savings is, can be tremendous for them. They're not quite big enough for you know, a big bank to build them a custom solution from end to end. Right. So the ability to participate in this digital transformation, even though they may only, you know, they're a middle market company, is, is you know, a tremendous boon. Um, and you know, I, I think this statistic is just uh, right in line with what we're talking about, which is everyone's thinking about this and you know, way more than half of organizations are definitely focusing on going to a B2B vendor that can bring them into this modern world. Like you said, by the time they talk to us, 
you know, when we have these conversations and they say, oh, we have 50 million in AP and 98% of it is on check. And yeah. we start showing them the numbers and the time, you know, it, it almost seems like it's a magic trick and we're like, nope, six weeks and you're all done. Uh, so, so this doesn't surprise me at all because it's very consistent with the conversations that we're having every day. Yeah, no, we, we ran into that at the very beginning. We ran into uh, someone say, uh, oh, we, we check 100% of everything. And I asked, well, how much do you spend? How many invoices do you have? And how many people do you have? And I said, well, it's mathematically impossible. So we talked to the person responsible for checking and she was like, I spot check like one or two a week. She was just like <laughs> real straightforward about it. Totally threw in the towel, just like help us out, you know, which is what, which is what we got to here, which is, is just how, what sort of ROI we're returning. I don't know if you want to talk to this first and then I'll cover a couple of pieces for us. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the big the big ones for us are, are you know, the, those first couple where it's just, it's 100% in spend. You're getting out of, you know, the first poll question, I think was about the desperate systems. You don't have a V card with one vendor and then a, a check vendor and an ACH vendor. Um, you know, we're going to take 100% of that AP spend and optimize it and, and make it into a revenue generating function. And that's gonna just free up a tremendous amount of time for your staff, uh, depending on how much of the process is manual now and how many checks you're sending. I mean, it can be a tremendous amount of time. And, and then you can start digging into all these other levels of ROI, and fraud reduction, and you know how happy your vendors are and vendor retention and staff retention and all that. But, you know, th these first couple, uh, you know, we sometimes have to talk about a couple of times before the customer's like, oh, you can really do that. Okay. Well, you mean 100%. What about the wires? You know, that too. What about the ACH plus? Those two. Yeah. Um, but it's great. You know, we ran into the, uh, can you handle all of these formats? But really, can you handle all of these formats? You know, we ran into that. And it was just very funny because I looked at them and I was like, well, what's your current solution? And they were like, well, we bought this OCR thing. And I was, you know, as a computer vision person and a programmer uh, is my background. I was like, oh, no, that's why that's why it's also disastrous. You've taken your AP team and you've now trained them to be uh, test and training data experts in OCR tools. It's probably not the right scenario for you as a business. And um, and so we go in and we we target at least a 10x ROI. We achieved a 19x ROI in under 90 days for our first customer. Um, so really aggressive uh, in terms of ROI and spend. And it, that's real ROI. That's efficiency. That's actual cash dollars. That's cost of capital reductions, cash flow, because now when we submit to your payment network, the payment network isn't trying to figure out if all these payments are actually real and actually supposed to be paid um, uh, and actually correct. And instead the payment network can you know, spend their time on high value things like getting your vendors into the system, getting your vendors with the, uh, making sure your vendors have the, the way of interacting with you that they'd like. So I think that's really critical for, for us to focus on ROI. Yeah, I mean, when we tell customers that we've sent customers six-figure checks from their AP yeah. function, that you have to really go into explaining that because it's, <laughs> it's just not the way they're used to thinking about it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. All right. So thank you, Matt and Bill, for your insights today. Now we're going to open it up to the audience for some questions. Please submit them through the Q&A button on the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, looks like we've got a couple in here, so um, I'll read them aloud. Um, okay, so we have one from an anonymous attendee says the poll question on workflow optimization versus cash flow made me realize that workflow, workflow is the pain that teams feel day in and day out. They are probably sheltered somewhat from the pain of cash flow because the company is using crutches like lines of credit. If I think about a world where these get taken away to the benefit of the broader business, how should I think about the impacts of restricted cash flow on my team's day-to-day -day pain? I think, Bill, this is actually better for you, but the only bit of context I'll add here is that most of the time, AP is separate from treasury. And so they don't see the actual line item and how, how you know, detrimental poor AP actually is to the cost of capital in the business and the cash flow. But um, Bill, I'd love to, I'd love to hear your take on that as well. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we, we try to dig into these things with some specifics, but we also have 
supply chain finance and, and cash flow solutions. So as part of this whole service, we can also talk to these AP departments about the cash flow problems as well. So uh, I think that's a really good observation that you know, there's a relationship between these two things and it's not maybe a one-to-one, -one, but as, a, you know, as looking to be the single source outsourced AP payment solution, we also do address those issues around cash flow and we're happy to have those conversations. We actually ran into a situation where one of our customers uh, wasn't sharing the data that was flowing through the system, their, their, their spend data for supply chain with the supply chain team. And so we've made it very easy to do in our platform. Like literally, if you can share a Facebook post, um, you can you can do that at the same sort of process inside of Open Envoy. And they were blown away by just what the throughput was like, what the delivery efficiency was like. And you know, you realize that the AP team can really support strategically the rest of the organization if they have these sorts of tools in place. And it's not just another database asking for you know manual data entry. Yeah, I mean, we have this beautiful dashboards and interface where you can see, you know, really get the, the view of all your payments, who you're paying, how you're paying them, what's outstanding, who tends to not cash their V card or their checks have been sitting there. You can look at 30 days or 60 days. <clears throat> so it does give you this tremendous visibility. And then your vendors are getting that on the other side too and being able to go in the same portal and see their view of their business. All right, we have time for a couple more questions. Um, here's another one. Uh, Matt, this might be one for you. My company is currently using an OCR model. What is the difference between OCR and deploying AP automation? Uh, yeah, I personally dislike OCR greatly, I think is the most polite way to say my feelings on OCR. So I think what happened was um, AP teams needed a solution. 800 people in India probably weren't the solution. They decided to bring some of those solutions in-house, which they used OCR to do. And the idea theoretically is that you can get to a certain percentage accuracy and then get that data entered in the back office system and then two and three way matches run against that, that data. The reality of OCR is that you are now the man in the loop for test and training data. So your AP team is now being trained to do something they weren't hired to do. And the technology itself is pretty weak for payment workflows, honestly, because it's kind of slow, kind of clunky, requires a lot of like manual effort to get right, requires a lot of retraining and a lot of templates. So we just don't do it at Open Envoy. So if you work with us, you can send us whatever format you have. Uh, whatever format your vendor has, we're not going to tell your vendor to change the way they're doing things, which is ridiculous that that ever occurred in this space. And we're going to process it. And we use um, kind of a layer cake model effectively, which it uses a variety of algorithms um, to extract with a very high degree of accuracy because you know, we work with large enterprises, very like all Fortune 500 companies. And in that space, they all do billions of dollars and a billion times any percentage, no matter how small it turns out is a pretty substantial number. Um, and so we just have to be much more accurate in the payment workflow than an OCR solution allows. Great. And we have time for one more question. Um, Bill, this might be one for you. Uh, what are some common threats to the AP payments process we should look out for in 2022? Well, I, I think the big looming one out there is what if there's another shutdown? Um, so, you know, if you sort of uh, look, I'm, I'm on board with, hey, everything's opening up and we can finally go places and travel and see people and do all that. But, uh, you know, I know we were talking to a customer and they were telling us that their relatives in China are under complete lockdown right now. So, it, you know, I, I think the looming threat is really, you know, what happens if you kind of relax and you're like, oh yeah, we were, we were really focusing on this, you know, in the last six months, but now it seems like everything's okay. And, you know, I think we can kind of go back to the way we were doing things. And, you know, like, I don't have to worry about doing this big project. And then it happens again. And a lot of companies around you have done their transformation. So I, I think that what CFOs should be focusing on is not so much oh, I have to do this now because ABCD, but I'm in a very, very competitive landscape now. 
the cost of entry into doing a business, and, and you know, both Matt and I are at startups, is, is very, very low. And, and companies are coming in all the time and attacking across all these industries. And everybody said, oh, you know, there can never not be cabs. And then there was Uber. And, you know, virtually every major retailer in the country was killed by Amazon. So slowing down on these initiatives because we're coming out of the pandemic is a really bad idea. So I think that's the real threat is inertia, is the, well, I'm getting by with what I'm doing. And it seems like things are normalizing a little. So I'm just going to ride this out another couple of years before I address it. I think that's the, the big threat. I mean, obviously the cyber is out there and you have to think about that. And that's not something for a medium-sized company to take on themselves, et cetera, et cetera. But I think it's sort of that really you're fighting against the inertia of like relaxing again and not doing it and then really getting hit if something happens. Great. And I believe that is our program for today. Uh, thank you again, Bill and Matt, for all your time and insights. Great discussion. Um, for all of you, you will be receiving a follow-up email with today's webinar recording. And we also have incredible teams who are happy to discuss the next CEO and open Envoy further with you. Please reach out for a consultation or demo and take care. We hope to see you all again soon. Thanks, everybody. See ya.